The Chesapeake Bay is the largest estuary in the United States. Its vast watershed covers 64,000 square miles and is shared by six states where over 16 million people live, work, and play. The bay is one of the country's most valuable natural treasures, offering rich recreational opportunities and supplying millions of pounds of seafood every year. Let's explore how this ecosystem reflects the fragile balance between humans and their environment. The Chesapeake Bay was once famous for its incredible supply of delicious oysters, which provided livelihoods for watermen and were the reason there were thousands of boats oystering in the bay. Oysters were once so numerous that they were a hazard to navigation, and they provided gigantic catches. The canning industry supplied jobs and food and mountains of oyster shells. But oyster numbers have plummeted, rendering these mountains of oysters mere tales and photographs from history. The collapse of the oyster has been further exacerbated by disease, which now impedes oyster recovery in spite of restoration efforts. This is a tragedy, not just economically and socially for the watermen, but also for the ecosystem. So many plants and animals rely on oyster beds as habitat. We have lost the oysters, and the species that relied on them are suffering too. While the exploitation of oysters has affected the ecosystem, so has the growing population around the bay. With it, the nutrient loading from agricultural and industrial runoff has increased too. Excessive amounts of nitrogen and phosphorus enters the bay, and this causes blooms of small, fast-growing algae called phytoplankton. Algal blooms block sunlight from reaching the bottom, and, what is worse, turn the water into a dense soup. With only few oysters around to eat the plankton, most die off and sink to the bottom. This uses oxygen, turning increasingly larger areas of the bay into dead zones, deprived of the oxygen needed for life. The iconic blue crab is also affected by the algal blooms. In late summer, with temperatures soaring, algal blooms can cause crab jubilees, where legions of blue crabs swarm into shallow water, onto pilings, out of the water, anywhere, all in search of oxygen. Meanwhile, the waters turn into a dead sea, with fishes, oysters, and other life unable to escape. Oysters are not the only ones in the Chesapeake Bay eating plankton. Menhaden form immense schools that span hundreds of meters and graze on plankton as if they were the cows of the Atlantic seaboard. Menhaden are a key forage species in the food web, providing the dinner for birds, dolphins, and large predatory fishes such as striped bass. In competition with them is a large fishery, which captures menhaden to render into fish meal and fish oil. Striped bass are among the many predators of menhaden in the Chesapeake Bay. In turn, striped bass are a sought-after species for the ever-growing population of anglers. Overharvesting of striped bass in the 1970s and 80s caused a major decline in the population and led to a 1985 moratorium on fishing. This allowed for the recovery of striped bass and the moratorium was lifted in 1990. Concern is now centered on whether there is enough food for the growing striped bass population. Skinny striped bass that become victims of opportunistic diseases are common headlines in the Chesapeake newspapers. How does one balance the trade-off between maintaining fisheries for Menhaden and ensuring sufficient food for the predators that also rely on forage fish like Menhaden? We need ecosystem research to address such questions. And here, the bay is showing the way. This is where the first fisheries ecosystem plan was developed to manage the resources from an ecological perspective. Linked to this is a fisheries ecosystem model of the bay, an interactive food web model used to evaluate exactly questions like, does fishing leave enough food for marine life? The living organisms in the Chesapeake Bay are connected in an intricate and integrated web with dynamic properties. Human actions, historically and recent, have upset the balance of the bay. Many of the marine animals that once roamed the Chesapeake Bay, such as gray whales, dolphins, manatees, river otters, 
sea turtles, giant sturgeons, sharks and rays, and oysters have been drastically reduced or eliminated. Can we restore these populations as we have done for the striped bass? Can we turn back the clock? What will it take to restore the bay so that it again teems with life? Imagine the attraction the Chesapeake Bay could be. To see how it could be, we can turn to virtual reality. But to make the restoration of Chesapeake Bay a reality, we will need policy changes and cooperation.